Hello everyone, in this video it's going to be a two-part series basically taking a look at the GTN 750 which is a free add-on that you can get that has any aircraft that supports it or many of the default aircraft if you want to use it to replace like your G1000 or something like that. Now let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, um, if you are using this particular Piper, um, you want to make sure you activate the GTN 750, which is super simple. We're just going to come over here and I click that and then go ahead and get rid of all this other garbage down here. So the GTN 750 is like an all-in-one magic box of uh, GPS-y goodness. Uh, one of the tricky things in the real world, of course, is pushing the buttons in turbulence, but for this, it's not too bad. Basically, when you first fire this thing up, you're going to get a couple different pieces. All of your audio stuff is going to be at the top. Your main menu is going to kind of be down here at the bottom. Obviously, you know, you've got your classic map view and everything along those lines here. Today we're going to be concentrating mostly on dealing with the audio as well as setting up the map in such a way that you want. Next time we'll take a look at how to actually create flight plans into this as well as uh, fly different types of procedures. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first things first, now let's take a look at our audio panel. Uh, the way this works is a wonderfully straightforward. Basically what you have is you have your COM1 radio here, you have your NAV1 radio over here, and you have your transponder and audio panel kind of here in the middle. Using this is pretty straightforward. Uh, for example, I wanted to dial in a specific channel. I simply left click here and I will switch it. If I left click on the bottom one, however, it brings me to a panel where I can dial in the frequency. So if I wanted to, for example, do the uh, finger frequency, one, two, three, four, five, I can now press this. Now, if you press transfer, it will instantly load that channel in. If you press enter, it will save it in the background so you can quickly swap between it. You know, if you're at an airport, for example, and the uh, tower frequency is a 119 or 60, and you know that the ground frequency is, let's say, 12160, you can now set it up so when you're ready to swap between tower and ground, you go click, and you're good to go. This is wonderfully, wonderfully helpful if you're flying on something like that sim. Now, the navigation radios work the exact same way. You can see right now I'm on an ILS frequency of 110.50, and my standby is 113.90. Or zero. If I want to click on this, and let's say I want to go somewhere and not too, too far from here, I could do something like that, press transfer, and now it's going to load that into here. Remember, this is for this particular aircraft's application, this is my NAV1 COM1. My NAV2 COM2 is actually located down here. So depending on how I set this up over here, I might not even be able to pick up that frequency, which I'm not able to. Also up here, you're going to have the ability to go ahead and control your transponder. If I want to come in here in the U.S., uh, the VFR frequency is 1200. I can come down here and do altitude reporting and press the enter button. Poof. And just like that, I've got that all set. If I needed to ident for uh, air traffic control, I could just push that button. This little light's going to come on to kind of say, hey, I'm identifying myself. I'm identifying myself. Coming over down to the middle, we have the audio panel, which basically, if you click that button, it's going to give you all these bells and whistles as far as what audio we want to listen to. For example, I want to listen to NAV1, and I'm going to listen to COM1, DMA, and ADF. If I turn all of these on, all these radios are now going to come through my headset. If I want to disable that, you can just click on the ones you want to get rid of. The shortcut to that is actually up here. I can click and turn these on directly. So, for example, if we want to pick up uh, the Danbury Atis here, you know, if I come up here, I see it's 127750. What I could do is I could actually set that up. Come in here, whoop. Uh, 127750, whoop. Backspace. I love how you can go backspace. That never happens. So now, of course, we can go ahead and listen to that directly. Airport information, Oscar one six zero zero Zulu. Now, let's say I wanted to listen to that on the other channel, though. Ah, all we have to do now is come down here to the other radio. Like I said, since this is the other one, switch to that frequency, and now I just come to my audio panel, turn it on, or I can click on this button here, and it'll actually activate it. So now, what it will do is it'll actually read it to you on the other radio channel. So again, this is something you want to watch out to or for depending on what aircraft you have this installed in. If you're using this to overwrite the default G1000 or anything like that, you kind of have to watch out for that. Okay, with that all taken care of, the intercom, of course, we don't have any control over. We have everything. Now, the next thing we're going to take a look at is manipulating the map display itself. Now, this is super cool and one of the reasons why I love this particular tool. Again, this is free. You just drag it and drop it into your community folder. Uh, if you're looking for it, just uh, go on Google uh, GTN 750 um, MSFS, and you'll find it no problem. There is a premium version, which gives us a couple extra bells and whistles, but that's for another day. So after we do that, I'll click on the MSG button, absorb today's MSG, and I'm good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here where it says Menu. So when you press Menu, it's going to bring up this neat little place that gives you the ability to control how much detail is being visible here. So for example, if I shut off the topo button, boop, it's all gone. If I shut off airspaces, shut off intersections, I shut off VORs. You can see now what I've done is I've <laughs> stripped this thing down to almost nothing. But we, of course, can turn everybody back on if we want to. And we can even change the track from up to, for the people who don't like it the correct way, um, of course, you can make it so that north is up versus track is up. And again, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, coming here, we also have the ability to control how much detail is in the map. I think this is a great little slider. It's pretty straightforward. Unfortunately, at a current zoom, you're not going to see it. So let me zoom out just a teeny tiny bit here. There we go. Go back up to the menu. 
We'll go ahead and uh, crank up the detail here, and unfortunately, you're not going to get that much of a change. We go back over here and drag this all the way back down to the bottom. You can see it stays basically the same as what it is. But again, you have a lot of control over what's here. Now, the one thing I really, really, really like here, I'm actually going to put the detail back up. Careful not to accidentally click on the wrong thing here, otherwise we'll drag it later. One of my favorite things with this particular tool is right here. By the way, this is weather. And that's the Change Fields button. What the Change Fields button does is it lets you change your fields. So for example, DTK refers to desired track. GS is your ground speed. ETE is estimated time on route. DIS is your total distance. Let's say for some reason I wanted to change my ETE. I'll click on it and now you can actually pick what it says. So for example, um, let's say I want to say, um, well, let's see here, distance, destination. Whoop, we have bearing now. Cool, now it's bearing. So now you can make it display the bearing. So if I want to come up here, for example, and say, oh, why don't you give me my estimated fuel flow? Look at that. It'll display the amount of fuel you have at this current time. So, you know, you can come down here and you can set any of these. You know, you can get your GPS altitude. You can get the next waypoint. You can even set it to wind speed and direction, whatever you want it to do. There's no right answer for how you set this up. You just have to set it up in a way that makes the most sense for you. So in this case, again, wind coming out of that particular direction at six, I find that wonderfully useful. For me, I want to know where I need to go, how fast I'm going, how far I am, and how long it's going to take me. That's just for me. Again, everybody has their own particular style, and I find that you'll probably change that all the time depending on it. So you can do estimated time of arrival or estimated time to waypoint. So on this particular case, I'm just going to say estimated time to waypoint. Obviously, it's going to be zero right now. Now, when you're done messing with all these fields, you can just mash the back button and whoosh, you're all set. So if we wanted to, we could quickly dial in a waypoint, and I'll make it nice and easy today. That looks good. Press enter, press activate, boop. And now you can see that all my information instantaneously updates. Now, the reason I'm not getting a number there is because of the fact that I have to physically moving. There we go to actually get it to register in a number. And you can see it's going to take me four hours and four minutes at my current speed, which is uh, not terribly fast. Go ahead and tap the brakes and you can see all that stuff updates instantly. So if you ever need to, another really, really quick tip when you're first starting out with this particular tool is uh, let's say we're in uh, the system menu, we're under backlight and we're fitting with the backlight. And we're, oh no, I want to go home. Just push the home button, then press map, and whoosh, you're right back to your default map. Another thing worth noting, too, is you have this little button right here, which you can go ahead and control the audio level for that particular comm radio, but it's not that big of a deal. But if you need to do it, it's there waiting for you. And of course, you have this knob here, which is the backup knob, I like to call this. This one allows you to manually set this frequency based on not having to type it in. So for example, if you wanted one, two, three, uh, we'll call it eight, zero, just for easy, you can do that directly. Now, if you press in on this knob, you can switch between the left side, which is calm, and you can press this to the right side, which is nav. This is super helpful in a real airplane when you get really bad turbulence. Otherwise, you've got to find a place to grab the side of the bezel to be able to try to touch that with your finger. And trust me, it can be a pain in the butt in a real plane. All right, hopefully this video is helpful as far as uh, getting you established. Again, uh, for those of you who um, are not using this particular airplane, you can still use this tool. It's just going to uh, require you dragging from your installation folder into the airplane that you want to use it in. So if you want to use it in the Cessna 172, if you want to use it in the G36, it all works in that particular tool. Next time, we're going to take a look at flight plane and a little bit of the en route stuff. Enjoy.